Hello, hi everyone. Michelle with Blossom Inner Wellness and StandTogetherHawaii.com and I'm super excited to interview a really good friend and my chiropractor doctor, Dr. Mateo Martinez here on the Big Island of Hawaii. And Dr. Mateo is actually, was born here in Hilo. So tell us a little bit about yourself and where you're from and which is right here on the Big Island. Um, yeah, my, my dad came here in 1968 and met my mom and I'm the product. My dad's from Ecuador, my mom is from Tahiti, and um, so they met, and so I was raised here off and on uh, my whole life, and I did do the mainland thing, but decided to come home as fast as possible, but I am a traditionally trained doctor, a chiropractor, and I am an um, oriental medicine doctor as well. Kind of combined them, uh, I got my claim to fame of being the first doctor to combine an urgent care facility with alternative medicine. So for instance, if a patient would come in with the flu, I wouldn't just give them drugs, I would give them like a high dose vitamin C bag and different things like that. And so uh, that's how I got famous and then started to do more chiropractic care for movie stars and famous people. And um, then I had some inventions, uh, Blue Room and Life Vessel, which took me around the world to install those. And so blessed to be back home here in Hawaii though. So I, I love this big island. It's definitely my home and mm -hmm. it's, it's just, I love um, the work that you're doing and the blue room Thank and everything you. like that. Thank you. It absolutely changed my life with, uh, with the frequency of that blue room. Mm -hmm. But this, today's topic is about Maui. Uh, you have friends there. You have I do. friends I have and family. Fa friends and family in Maui. Mm -hmm. So when that first happened and you first heard about the Maui fires, what did you think about that? Um, of course, right away, just concern for the people, concern for um, life. Um, any loss of life is, is uh, just awful. And that was where my heart was first at, like, okay, how are the people? How are my family members? How are the people that I love? And of course, you know, I, I have friends and family here that also have friends and family in Maui. And uh, we all got together and say, have you heard from them? You know, because there was a few days of no contact. There was no communication. And... Um, of course, then you heard the death toll. So that was the first thing. It was the initial shock of loss of life, loss of loved ones. And, you know, as it's progressed, you know, mm -hmm. now we're, we're all kind of less left with this aftermath of, um, well, I'm just going to say opinions and rumors and different things like that. And then there are some solid facts of things that have happened. And, I mean, I, we can get into it if you want to. Yes. I mean, I think, yes, honestly, if, we it's, if we look at it for what it is, it's a, it's a big land grab. Um, of what is being happened now is that these poor business owners and homeowners have lost the right even to their land and, and the privacy of their ownership of their home and their businesses. And um, the truth is going to come out because it always does. But it looks that way now that businesses are going to take over. Big businesses, resorts, movie stars are going to come in and just grab up the land from the people. Which has been the unfortunate history for us in Hawaii is that we have ownership to a point, to a point of force. Somebody forces us off our land mm -hmm. or, an, or they call a natural disaster comes in and moves us out of our land or they say it's uninhabitable for us at this point and they, they move us to a different location. And I think a lot of us, I would say most of us are sick of it. You know, we're, we're to a point where, okay, this is Hawaii, this is our home, and, you know, I, I love that we have our people who come here, and they make it their home, and then they, they join the fight with us about, because like, they can see it right away, that we don't have 100% access to the land that we're supposed to have, you know, and, and it's just the same old story, over and over again, and here we are again, you know, this the land there is supposed to be where I think it was what five point eight billion dollars total of mm -hmm. land that's that's there. Mm -hmm. You know, if a resort comes in and establishes itself, I mean that land is gonna be worth then twenty five billion dollars, thirty billion dollars. So up. so that's kind of where we're at. And um, it, it's it's heartbreaking, you know, because we wanna keep Hawaii the way Hawaii is. And mm -hmm. that's what I think Lahaina was, was still old Hawaii. You know, still had the old stores from when I was a kid, you know, you know, 30 plus years ago when I would go to Maui to surf or to hang out with family. The boardwalk, the old shops, the restaurants, you know, um, and that's gone, you know, and do we, are we going to get it back? 
Probably not. You know, but, but that's where we need the people to join in and really stand up for something. So your family is safe? Yeah, all my family is safe. Yeah, my, my cousins and, and relatives are all safe. Everybody's okay. So now what they're doing is they're evicting people whose houses weren't destroyed. Mm -hmm. And um, what, do you think, what do you think that's about? Well, I mean, I've heard from government and from people in positions of power never waste a crisis, you know? And I think that that's what they're doing, is that they're capitalizing on, on this crisis. And, I mean, we can see it from what... Uh, the community here in Hawaii is so strong. You know, when it happened, I can't tell you, all the islands band together to have supplies shipped to Maui. You know, we, we need this to get out. We need this story to get out. You know, food, water, medical provisions, physicians were on the standby, nurses were on the standby to go over to help from every island. I was on standby to go over to help. And all of a sudden, they halted everything. They confiscated the things that we shipped, FEMA and the Red Cross, and they weren't allowed to be distributed out to the people. So, I mean, we're, we're looking at some very interesting things. Now, I'm going to say this is my opinion. I'm backing this up by people that have told me that. You know, I'm open to conversations about what people want to say happened and didn't happen. Um, but from where I sit in my opinion as growing up in Hawaii, this isn't the first time this has happened. I mean, we're, we look at what happened to uh, Kauai when the hurricane hit back in 92, everybody from every island went over to help rebuild. But you know what happened? Very wealthy people came in and bought up land and they built big houses. And it drove the prices up for the people who could afford only small houses. And we look at what's happened from since the pandemic, especially land prices have just gone through the roof. Mm -hmm. You know, all of us who would love to you know, keep Hawaii the way it was, we're struggling to keep it the way it was and mm -hmm. the cost of living. And we have a saying being priced out of paradise and, and, it, and it's happening. And, and that's kind of where we're looking at Maui right now is it almost feels to me, and this is my opinion, that the regular people who want to live in Hawaii and make Hawaii their home are not going to be allowed to. I mean, I heard the governor even talk about he wants to create yeah. housing, workforce, workforce housing. It's like, whoa, mm -hmm. you, you mean slave housing? Okay, thank you. You know, what about family homes? You know, what about homes for Ohana, our family? There's no talk about this. There's no talk about, you know, recreating uh, communities. It's workforce housing. That's what they want to say. So what does that mean, Governor? I mean, exactly. Mm -hmm. I would like to hear what that means. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Now, you were talking about, um, before we started, Lahaina is a very important part of the Hawaii Islands. Yeah. Can you share about that? Well, it's it's really a, a beautiful, well, it, it was, and I, I'm going to still say it is, a beautiful place for, for community, but also it was a very sought-out place for tourism. So there's a lot of old shops and restaurants and businesses and things that were thriving because of the, the high tourism that went to Maui, and so this is premium property that, that we lost. And then the homes there, the communities, People lived there and worked there and owned the businesses and they, they kept that, that spirit alive. And so now it's, um, I mean, we're going to have to see what's going to happen, but it will never probably be the same Hawaii that it was. And it was the first capital of Hawaii, It right? was the first capital of Hawaii, yeah. And yeah. Then, it, then it changed to Oahu. Right. Um, so you, so the, the... What's happening right now with, um, well, what actually, what can people do? If well, I mean, I, I think we have, like I said, we have such strong community. I, I mean, there are people getting their, their boats out and shipping co containers and things privately from island to island, people using their private planes. I don't think we have a lack of community here in no. Hawaii. I think we have a very strong community in Hawaii. But what we have, and this is my opinion, um, and I hope people agree with me, is that we have very crooked politicians here. You know, all I have to do is bring up the rail system in Oahu. I mean, how many billions of dollars and how many years later, they're still, it's still not working. So what happened to that, that? That was supposed to be for the people. And the way that we think and the way that we vote and the way that we look at politics is all wrapped up in this because our leaders are not responding to the people. Mm -hmm. They're continuously siding with big business. And this is going to get me probably in trouble with politicians. 
But when you have a politician that goes into the political office of their choice and they have a said net worth that is much lower than the net worth when they get out, you can only assume that they use that office for, for monetary gain rather than the, the people gain. And these offices are meant to be for service and protecting the people and the land of Hawaii. And, and I don't see that happening in great quantities at all. Now, do I think we have some good people there? I do. I do think there are some good people. But we're being overshadowed by interests that are big business motivated and not people motivated. Mm -hmm. So community, you got to stand up. You got to show up. You got to go to meetings. You got to make your voice heard. Yeah. And you got to think about who you're voting for and why you're voting this way. And simply because you think that one political party is better than the other, do your research. Mm -hmm. Get out get out of your head about which part political party is better because personally I don't think anyone's better than the other. Mm -hmm. You gotta really look at it and look at Hawaii and how you voted and how we got to the place that we're at. And this is really important for the people to get. So with the um, with where it's headed now and what what we're looking at, is there anything that people can do? I mean, I know we don't want, we, we want to donate directly to the people. Mm -hmm. So I will have uh, the links below for those direct uh, donations. I know that Maui Food Bank is one, Hunger Heroes Hawaii is another one. Uh, and then there's a link that actually goes to GoFundMe for particular families that are in need right now over. Uh, but is there anything else that people can do? I, I think really, if you can't contribute monetarily, like money-wise, you can't contribute, you can't do this, is get involved with your, your research. Get involved with listening to what's going on. Um, the days of just kind of ignoring situations need to be over. Mm -hmm. um, everyone needs to kind of stand up and at least be aware of what's really happening. Yeah. You know, I, I, I use this in my practice all the time. I said, you know, by you ignoring your health issues, they don't go away. You know, so you ignoring your community issues, they don't go away. You know, um, there's an interesting thing that's happening here in Hawaii also that I want to bring up is our homeless um, people are on the rise as a population. We have other states that are sending homeless people here because their homelessness is on the rise. So we have certain issues in the community that, that are keep, keep coming up, but there isn't a lot being talked about. And so get you have to get with your neighbors. You have to talk with your neighbors. I, I think that's a good thing is still about Hawaii is that most of us are going to know our neighbors. The mm -hmm. aloha spirit is still alive. And we need to perpetuate that by communicating, talking. And just because you have a different opinion than someone or you have a different belief system than someone doesn't mean we can't love each other mm -hmm. and give each other aloha and come to solve problems that are in the community. So if you can't donate, you can't go and help physically, at least talk about it at least ask questions you know don't ignore it yeah yeah and um, standtogetherhawaii.com actually has to do an action step and it has links to the governor to the um, attorney general to all of the representative state representatives or, or senators so you can just go to standtogetherhawaii.com and you can actually just contact them right now and that's actually they need to hear from us because the governor first started saying you know, I'm looking for ways to acquire the land, for the state to acquire the land for workforce housing. That was his exact words. Now he's not saying that anymore. And he's saying, you know, oh, we're going to build it back the way you want the, for the Lahaina people. But I, I don't think that that was really, that's his agenda. But I think he changed his tune because he was getting so many people <laughs> contacting him, yeah. you know, upset with this. Yeah. So that's what we need to do is, is contact our, our government leaders. Uh, so Dr. Mateo, is there anything else you want to share? Um, I... I, I I really want to share that we are a strong community in Hawaii and, and I love that we have separate islands, you know, and, and each one has its different personality and its different little flair and I think that makes us beautiful. But I know that we all are connected, you know, we, we all are Hawaiians and we all want to have the Hawaii that we grew up with we, and we want our children to experience that Hawaii, which is strong ohana, strong community, strong aloha. And that we, we live in this place where it's still safe to send our children out to play outside. And this is something that we have to start standing up for. And population increase is, is going to happen. But if we stay strong as a community and we keep the Aloha spirit alive and we teach people about the Aloha spirit, it's going to keep perpetuating for the generations. And 
you know, I, I've said being priced out of paradise. I would like to see that not happen anymore. And the only way we're going to keep Hawaii um, not so expensive is if we keep battling big business and we keep up letting them know that we're not going to just buckle and let them move in and keep pricing up the homes and pricing up food and all of those different things. But we need we need each other. That's my point. We absolutely need each other. And I just want to thank you very much for doing this and bringing these wonderful issues to light for everybody and that we have communication and conversation about it. Yeah. yeah. And then the last thing I want to share is be prepared because you just don't know when things are going to happen. So I actually have a, a to-go bag, a prepare bag. It's always in my car uh, with food and water, clothes, an extra pair of shoes, you know, things like that. So, so just be prepared, get to know your neighbor, and, um, and always spread the aloha. So much mahalo to you. Much mahalo to you too. Thank you.